Hello, my name is Sarah Stevens. Hello, my name is Matt Stevens. I didn't know, you know, what was going wrong. I just, I, I just kept thinking there was hope. I said she'll be, she'll recover, she'll be okay, everything will be fine, you know. And, and anytime she would be scared, you know, I would try to comfort her as good as I could. Um, and then, and then things went south um, a few weeks later. Fire and EMS, where is your emergency? Eight. My wife's bleeding really, really bad. Okay, uh, repeat. She had a... Hold on just a second. Yeah. Repeat your address again for verification. It's eight. Oh, that's, Allen, Missouri. That's in Hidden Meadows off of Bryan? Yes. Okay, it's what's, like, a good, what's, a, what's a good callback what's a good call back number for you? Six three six. Seven, five. My okay. wife had a C-section three weeks ago with our baby, but she's bleeding really, really, really bad right now, and just okay. keeps coming out everywhere. Is she, she bleeding from the incision site? You have an incision, honey, or your vagina? Her vagina. She's okay. Okay. Bad. Something's wrong. My, she's okay. My, okay. Listen to me. My partner's going to get some help on the way. I've got to go through some questions, okay? How old is she? Okay. They're, they're, on, they're on the way, honey. How old is she? Don't speak phone. You want to talk to her? No, no. I don't want to talk to her. I want to talk to you. How old is she? She's uh, 31. She's 31? Okay. Like I said, my partner's dispatching help. Is she awake? Yeah, she's on is, the toilet. Is she breathing? Yeah, she thinks she's going to die. She's freaking out. Okay. Well, like I said, my partner's dispatching help, okay? Okay. Is the animal okay. When did, when did you say that she had the baby? Three weeks ago. She's had, okay. She lost she, three and a half years of blood at that time. Okay. And is she complete? Sir, hold on just a second. I need to get through these questions, okay? Is she completely alert? Yes, at this time, yes. Is she breathing normally? Yeah, you okay, honey? Okay, would you consider the bleeding serious? Yes. Okay. Does she have a bleeding disorder or is she on blood thinners? No, she's on blood pressure medicine. She's on blood pressure medicine. Okay. Well, like I said, my partner is dispatching the paramedics to help her. Just stay on the line. I'll tell you exactly what to do next. From now on, don't let her have anything else to eat or drink. It might make her sick or it could cause further problems. Just have her rest. Try to rest in a comfortable position and wait for help, okay? I do okay. want you to watch her closely. If she becomes less awake and vomits, you need to turn her onto her side before the okay. responders get there. If you guys have pets, put those away. Go ahead and gather up her medication if she's on any. I need you to go ahead and unlock the door, turn on an outside light, and if she gets worse in any way, call us back immediately for further instructions. But we've got paramedics dispatched, okay? Okay. Is the okay. ambulance speaking close to us? Uh, I can tell you where they're coming from. I can't give you an exact time. Hold on just where a second for me. Uh, they're coming from Brian and Fizey, so they're not too far away from you. Uh, no, right, right down the street. Yep. Okay. We're on the way. Call us back if anything changes, okay? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Bye. You know, the first thing I did was I ran to go see her in the bathroom. Um, you know, she's sitting down on, on the toilet. Um, I'm talk. I'm bleeding. I'm talking like pouring bleeding. And it was, you know, she had her hands on the walls. She says, I'm going to die, I, I, and it was just pouring out um, all over outside the toilet, all over the ground, um, almost like you're just, you know, pouring out a cup of water. Just, I mean, it was, it was, it was, I, I was in shock, and I heard the sirens, and they pulled up, and I got in the front yard, and I started screaming at him. I said, get in the house, get in the house now, and she's bleeding out, and um, now what happened was, I, I think she lost over a liter or something all over the floor, and then... Um, Something, I guess it was your uterus, it like, it stopped, I guess it's, the bleeding started slowing down, thank God. Because if it didn't, she would have passed away right there. It started slowing down, but she lost a lot. The paramedics, we couldn't get the stretcher in the bedroom, so we all had to pick her up off the floor and bring her through while Riley, Riley was watching and uh, get her on the stretcher and get her out. In the meantime, I had no, I was stuck with the kids. You know, I was like, my wife's, you know, she's gonna, look like she's gonna die and they had to take her off and I'm stuck at home. So I, I called her mother and said, Lori, something's wrong with Sarah and you need to come over now. And she was over within 10 minutes and she helped me clean up the blood for him. Where's this ambulance? Like, call him back, call him back. I was like freaking out because usually ambulances are quick. This was kind of long. Um, I'm like, I don't want to move. I'm like so scared. Um, 
I was relieved that they were here. I get into the ambulance, they get IVs in both arms. Um, luckily, you know, the hospital wasn't too far away, so we get there super fast. And then um, they wanted to send me home, and I'm like, I'm not going home. Nobody just loses that much blood after three weeks of just, you know, having a baby. And then the OB came down and was like, um, maybe you've started your period. And I'm like, no, no there's, there's just that no doesn't way. happen. Yeah. And then she also told me, asked me how far away do you live? And I said, about 10 minutes. And she was like, well, you're close if it happens again. And, the, the and if is, we wanted to stay again, we would have to sign a paper because our insurance might not cover it because they did want to release us because my vitals were okay. And the bleeding has slowed. It didn't stop. They were not monitoring my She would my go bleeding. to the bathroom every now and then and I'd be with her and it would still, it, you know, it was still, it was slow, but it was still spot in there. You know, I said, you know, you know, she begged them, um, she wanted to be transferred to St. Luke's. Where, where I had my C-section. Yeah, where she had the C-section. I know things went wrong there, but her main doctor and her OB belonged to that hospital. So we finally got the transfer, and it took almost all day. Mm -hmm. It was nighttime before they could transfer us over there. Called her mom and said, hey, you know, we're being transferred to St. Luke's. Um, can you help us out watch the kids overnight? And she gladly did it. Um, I said, you know, they're just going to monitor overnight and, and see how things go. Because right now she's stopped the major pleading. So, you know, things could be looking up. We got there and they, they closely monitored me again through the night. I did pass a large clot that night, probably the size of a golf ball. Got woken up in the morning by Sarah. Yeah. And then... It is 7 a.m., the same time, Saturday, the day before. I had a tech come in and say, you know, how the techs come in. They come do your blood pressure and everything. She wakes me up, and I, like, wake up. And then I'm like, it's happening again. I'm bleeding again. She's like, oh, you need to go to the bathroom. I go, no, I can't move. I'm bleeding again, like, bad. And then she, I guess, went and looked, and then... That's when, like, the button got hit, and then about 15 nurses come to my side. Yeah. Um, doctors, nurses, but the whole, it happened so fast. You know, I, I looked over, and I, I saw, you know, blood coming out and pulling again. I said, here we, here we go again. Yes, you know, it's, it's happening. And, and this time, it just looked, it just looked way worse. It just wasn't stopping. And, um, you know, they got in there, they opened her up, and they said, they were pretty shocked. They're like, I think they, they kind of knew what was going on. They knew you were hemorrhaging, or she was hemorrhaging. Um, and then they checked her blood pressure, and everybody got quiet. It was like, you know, you could hear a pin drop. And she said, it's 60 over 30. And that's, that's half of where you want to be. You know, she was going to the shock, and her, she was turning pale and yellow. And she said, I just want to see my babies one more time. And, uh, and you know, she said, I just want to wake up at the end of this. And Marge, the nurse that was holding her hand, she said, that's that's our goal, that's our plan. But she never promised her she would. So uh, it was a very scary moment. And I was just holding her other hand, I was looking in her eyes, you know, just saying, stay with me, stay with me, I love you, and kissing her on her head and, and all this, why there was, you know, 12, 15 people working on her. And they were trying to get blood into her her vein and her veins for some reason wasn't accepting it. They were trying to get on each arm. They were trying to go and they said, I can't get it in. I, I don't know what was going on. And then in that moment, I thought something very rare was happening. Something like her body's rejecting all this. Like she's just, she's just, she's going to die. I think the nurses, everyone kind of knew it too. They were doing what they could to stop it. Um, and I remember a nurse, I think her name was Marge. Yeah. She had, was holding her hand. She's like, I just want to say, we're going to, you know, we're going to put you to sleep. You know, we got to open back up, and then uh, they rush her out the surgery. They rushed out of the room. They're all just, I mean, they were running, you know, um, to get her out as fast as they can to get her to get her going. So they watch her go, kiss her goodbye, and I was like, this could be the last time I see my wife alive. Mm -hmm. so, and then we, um, 
So we go to a waiting room and, you know, we're crying, we're trying to hug it out and we're just like staying outside the operating room. And even the nurses, a few of the nurses were crying. Um, they were teary eyed. And I know they see a lot of stuff, but I showed the deaths and stuff that happened like this. I'm sure it's still an emotional roller coaster for them. Um, and I kept asking the one word we kept wanted to hear is, is she stable? Is she stable? Yes, she's stable. Um, and I followed one of the nurses. I guess I couldn't be there. It was too much for her. She walked out down the hall and I followed her. And the other nurse uh, closer to our room said, what's going on? What's going on out there? It was just, it was just craziness, you know? And she's like, this girl is bleeding out so bad. I don't know if she's going to make it. And then I just kind of broke down. Um, I don't know how to explain that. It was, felt like it was a nightmare. It was, I don't know how else to explain it. It was uh, very scary. So when I was talking to the nurse on the phone, she said, it sounds like ureter and atony, um, which means the uterus doesn't close up all the way and it just lets it bleed freely. Um, and there's main arteries going to that, uh, main veins, and it just, you can bleed out within minutes and that's what was going on. And she was very emotional over the phone because she knows Sarah very well. And I was like, you know, I was crying and I was like, just be honest with me. I go, do you see this type of stuff? Because you're a nurse, I mean, you're, you work with an OB, that's all you deal with is, is pregnant ladies and, and all that stuff all the time. She says, Matt, we, we, we really don't, we don't see this. It was uh, that rare. And you gotta think of how many women go in their office every single day of the year they said, we just don't see something like that. She was crying. And at that moment, they sent a priest in um, because they knew it was slim chance that she would survive. And even the nurse over the phone heard the priest was coming in and, and she just lost it. And uh, she really helped me through some of those biggest, the hardest moments. Uh, so I give a shout out to Nurse Julie and, um, and, and uh, Dr. Matusik uh, for saving her life. She was the main, um, our main OB that went back in there and, uh, and saved her. Well, I woke up intubated with a tube down my throat and I immediately was like, I can't breathe. Like I couldn't talk, but I couldn't breathe because I guess that machine's breathing for you. So I like couldn't tell them. I just remember I was like, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Like, what do I do? Finally, like I relax and then, um, I can hear him like talking a little bit um, and then they finally take the like the breathing tube out of me and then I think I don't really remember much I think Matt came in you saw me yeah um, we were we, we were in the waiting in room with her whole it. family her whole family eventually got there my parents and everyone were just kind of waiting around um, and a few of the relatives. Um, and they said, you're just waiting for a call until she's out of surgery. So pretty much you were waiting for hours. The whole entire time thinking, is she, is she gonna live through this or is she gonna pass away? You know, so we didn't know. It was like the flip of a coin at that point, just sitting in this room and it was the longest couple hours I've ever dealt with. Um, but finally we do get a call and she says, you know, she made it through surgery. Um, and then the, the doctor came down and talked to us. They explained what had happened and what they did. And she's gonna have a very hard recovery and she's in the ICU and you guys can go see her here in a little bit. And then um, we went up there to see you and she was still actually um, unconscious at that point. And um, you could hold her hand and if you squeeze it, she would squeeze back. I don't think you remember that. Mm -mm. Um, but yeah, seeing her laying there with all these wires and there was um, tubes in her neck, down her throat. I mean, it was just, it wasn't Sarah, you know, it was, uh, it, yeah, it was a mess. It was, it was very emotional. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. So I needed an emergency hysterectomy to save my life. Yeah. So no more babies. No more babies, but... You know, God gave us a girl and a boy, so we're very blessed and they're healthy. So we're very happy about that, you know. So it's just his plan. I didn't really want to know exactly what all happened. I didn't want to know how much blood I lost, what, what happened. I know I needed an emergency hysterectomy to save my life. Um, but that's 
really it. I struggled a lot. A lot of my friends came and saw me. I asked, uh, a priest came and saw me again. Um, I asked for a therapist there. I actually got to meet another survivor sister who went through the same thing as me in the same hospital by the same doctor, which is really crazy because we share about the same story. She came and talked to me and helped me a lot through there. When I got home, it was a rough ride. I was out of my safe place. I was scared it was gonna happen again. I constantly felt the tingling of me bleeding out. I just always thought it was gonna happen again. Yeah, it was hard to trust your body again, I guess. Definitely hard to trust my body again. Right. Cause everything, you know, like we kept reassuring her doctors and me there she's like it's gonna happen again I said honey it can't you know your uterus is gone but we're trying to be bright about it and smile because like she's gonna be okay now when people yeah. kept telling me it's not gonna happen again it can't that's what they told me the first time like how do I trust people like it happened once it happened again even though the main source was out I still believed it was going to happen again. Um, I finally got my doctor's notes, looked through them all. I did lose my whole blood volume, everything in my body. I required about 25 blood transfusions. I was intubated. I went into shock. I needed, I had respiratory failure. Um, yeah, I mean, you name it. Central lines in my neck, which was like my jewelry piece I called and like hung. Quicker way to get blood into your yeah. system through the arm because she was losing it too fast. So it was All the going medicines. in just as fast as it was coming out. Yeah. I just want to say to anyone to advocate for yourself because when you know something's wrong you know your body more than anybody else does more than doctors more than anybody you know what's happening so I had to advocate for myself to not go home from the first hospital to get transferred to know that something is wrong because if I would have went home, I would not be here today with my family or my husband. So I would have bled out way too fast. Yeah, I the talked second to, time. Talked to, to the doctors about it. it. It was confirmed. They said there's no way if she would have went home, like the first hospital wanted. She would not be here today. So it was. Uh, she knew what was wrong, and you know, I, I, I went out there and talked to the doctors and just tried to make it happen. Maybe listen to us and transferred. St. Luke saved my life. Janet McTusick, Marge, Angie Warner, Heather, gosh, Mindy, Julie. I, I mean, there's so many. Staff was I can't, great, all professional. I can't thank them Amazing. enough for everything they did for us. Yeah. They acted fast and. <laughs> During shift change, yeah. that's what it was. Too. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, there was a double ship change, and they said there was double of everybody at once. That's why so many people flood the room, um, which was awesome. You know, they had double doctors, double nurses. They all flood the room. It was just, you know, it's like, wow, there's so many people here. But thinking back on it now and knowing it was during a ship change, we got very lucky because there was extra hands, and uh, you were the main focus of the entire hospital at that moment. I went to the primary doctor um, just to see how everything was going on. With all the blood loss, I wanted to know, like, you know, just to get a physical, to check my levels, check all this stuff. Um, I did complain a little bit of shortness of breath, but I thought that was anxiety because I was having panic attacks, anxiety, PTSD. Uh, figured it was not much. Um, 
weeks after birth, three weeks after um, coming home from the hysterectomy, um, the doctor was like, I was kind of concerned about blood clots. I didn't really know, but I know that's why they get you up after surgery. They get you to walk. They get you to do this because you don't need to get a, You don't want to get a blood clot. Um, so I was kind of like, eh, you know, that's not going to happen. But so they ran a D-dimer test, which would likely come back positive in my case because I had all this blood. I had all this thing. So she kind of reassured me. She's like, it probably will be a false positive. Um, just... So don't be, like, too worried. The next morning, get a phone call. It's positive, elevated. You need to go in for a CT scan. But still, it could be a, a false positive. We do see those. They didn't sound too worried. They said, just go get it checked out. So we went there. I mean, we're in pretty good mood. We're like, it's probably going to be nothing. It's going to be negative, and you're fine. Do the x-ray, and then they call us back to the x-ray room. Um, and they put her in a wheelchair, and they're just like, she's like, okay, you know, they just want to comfort her and say, here, we'll walk you around, you know? And we went to the x-ray room and within, I'm talking seconds, seems like 10, 15 seconds of getting to that doorway, the guy, uh, you know, pushing her wheelchair, walked in there and he comes right back out and he goes, she needs to go to the ER. She's got a pulmonary embolism in her lung. And I was like, oh my gosh. So that's a blood clot to your lung? Yeah. And you start, you know, breaking down, crying again. She's like, here we go. And then, uh, push her down there to get to the ER and uh, another four day stay yeah um put on blood thinners to a girl who just bled out was very terrifying a lot of anxiety again yeah um just a roller coaster ride yeah. and we were lucky it was it was a small yeah. clot um and then the bigger ones you know can kill you instantly I think it's like um one out of ten chance you can you know pass away from those which you know happens every day uh, but she was lucky to have a smaller one and one of the veins and uh, they were able to get it under control. Um, so, we, you know, she's lucky for that too, so. But it was, uh, it was extremely emotional and uh, the hardest thing I've ever had to deal with. Um, and people don't truly understand, you know, we can make um, posts about it or tell people about it until you're actually in that moment in that position in your life where you go through something like that no one will ever understand or, or uh, take it as serious you know and they know they knew they see it online or whatever it might be and they, they see that and they said oh that's horrible you know and and after a while they're like okay they're okay now but they see you they, survive they see you survive and emotionally um, it's with you forever it's with you forever you know, nobody I, goes I, I, I still wake up you know in the middle of the night uh, just randomly there are times they'll just have flashbacks of that stuff and have, you know, nightmare type stuff. That's, uh... Do whatever you have to do to get through what you're going through. Um, write about it. Write on Facebook about it. Talk to your friends about it. See a therapist if you need medicine. That's okay. It's um, a lot to go through and I just want people to know that they're not alone. If anybody needs to talk me I'm here um, it's pretty heavy um, but you'll get through it with good family and support and friends right yeah. be strong if you can believe in God pray stay by your wife's side as much as you can and um, just something like this will change your perspective in life you know, yes. from now on um, how you know, you don't know how something precious is and valuable until you, you know, you're about to lose it. Um, you appreciate so just, life. Yeah, you appreciate life. Just enjoy life, you know. Just enjoy every day with your, your family, your wife, your kids. Don't take just, life too seriously. 